Hello, welcome to Amy Toft Chair Yoga. Another day, another chance to do yoga. Let's begin just sitting up in our chair. Breathing into the sides of our diaphragm. So if our diaphragm were a map, we would be breathing east and west on the inhale and then just exhaling everything back together. Close your eyes if you want. Everything's optional. And now let's breathe east and west to the sides of our diaphragm and then south and north. So to the bottom of our diaphragm and to the top. So we'll breathe like we're expanding a whole ball or a globe, the whole world. And when you're doing this, you don't have to really think about any of the muscles. You just need to think of it in your head and it will happen. And while you're doing this great breath, just notice how you feel. Notice if you feel a little calmer from your big, slow breaths. Stimulating the brain, you're okay. Maybe not stimulating, maybe letting the brain relax. The theme for this week is a quote from the, po the poet William Blake. We are put on earth for a little time that we may learn to bear the beams of love. That we may learn to bear the beams of love. I've been thinking about this. What does it mean? Well, it could mean that we're helping other people bearing another's burdens, helping, looking out for people who might need just a smile or a friendly hello or even something much more. It could also mean that beams of love are coming to us all the time from other people. Do we even notice? Do we even notice how people look at us or how we feel when we're with other people? So maybe learning to bear the beams of love is just all the love that's already around us. Learning to recognize that. Just keep breathing into your whole diaphragm. I'll stop talking eventually. So two years ago, about this time, is when my dad died. And so I'm thinking of the beams of love that he sent out, and sometimes I still feel them. So maybe you have someone that you love you'd like to dedicate your practice to today. And if not, if you think that's silly, all good. You can just practice for yourself. So let's do two more breaths. And then we'll try to keep this breath going throughout practice. I say try because I often forget. But any time in your life, not just during yoga, when you can use this deep, round breathing is going to be great. So there's a skill you can take with you right off the mat. Let's start with our head today. We're just going to drop our chin down to our chest. And then really gently, just let your eyes look up at the ceiling. Don't yank your neck back to look up. Just let your eyes go up, then chin down. 
eyes up slowly so the neck oh my gosh the neck the cervical spine those little tiny bones holding up your big bowling ball of a head your head weighs so much so let's just be super gentle and mindful of our necks now drop the chin to the chest again this time we're just going to look over the left shoulder chin back down to the chest and look over the right shoulder chin down look chin down look let your chin come back up and again so respectful of the neck so just move it slowly as feels right to you you don't have to move when I do let right ear come toward right shoulder the shoulder stays right where it is it does not come up to help then really slowly like a rainbow let your head come across left ear toward left shoulder left shoulder stays where it is like a rainbow your head goes back ear comes down one more time and then back up one more neck thing really gently oh let's go left first just look over your left shoulder mostly with your eyes not with yanking your neck and just keep looking so as I said your head weighs as much as a bowling ball and a heavy one a 10 pounder maybe and so your poor little neck when your head is okay look forward when your head your, sh your ears are right over your shoulders and you're in alignment that helps with mental alignment too but also it protects your neck because just the slightest bit of leaning forward increases the pressure on your neck by a crazy percentage like just a little bit forward makes your neck like 70 percent makes your head 70 percent heavier so anytime you can ears over the shoulders feel how that feels not just good in the body but it feels good in the brain right kind of opens things up in the mind Now let's scoop forward on our chair. We're just going to wake up our shoulders a little bit. So we all have different shoulder stuff going on. And just move how you can. Don't try to force anything. Begin with the right hand, the left hand. Hand palms facing the side of your leg and then just let it come straight up. When you get up in the air, flip the palm. Can you see my hand? Flip the palm and then let it come down behind so shoulders are still looking forward they're not turning sideways to help then keep your hand just like it is bring your arm back up flip the palm so it's facing the side of your body again and let your hand come down let's do it again straight up slowly flip behind slowly shoulders still going forward straight back up flip and back down it's really normal for there to be little pops and creaks in your shoulders here let's do the other side starting with the right palm facing the body arm up flip the palm down behind you Shoulders still facing forward. Let your hand come right back up, flip, and on back down. Again, still sitting up tall. Notice where your ears are, right over your shoulders. Come on back up, flip, and on back down. Let's take a breath. Remember, breathing into the whole diaphragm. Hmm. One more. And 
and then hands on the knees wait hand across on the other knee one hand behind just gently look around behind you you can use this hand on the back of your chair to kind of pull you a little bit sitting up tall and then come on around other hand crosses other hand goes behind sit up tall just look come on cross look the last time this other way okay now let's let's do our feet and knees before we stand up and of course you never have to stand up if that's not something that you do so I'm just holding my feet oh, an inch off the floor. My toes are coming up toward my knees, so they're flexed. And I'm just holding, just balancing. Thinking about ears over shoulders, thinking about a long, strong back. Just breathing. If this is too much, you can do one foot at a time. And as always, if your feet don't pick up by themselves, you can think about that happening and that will send the impulses down into your feet, give you all the same benefits. Inhale, and as we exhale, let's stretch our feet out. And again, it can be one at a time, if that works better. Pulling the toes back toward the knees. And then let them come down scoot forward a little more so that you can put one toe down and your heel up and then just opposite toe heel toe heel scoot back a little bit so you can see better toe toe just waking up the feet And let's think about our ankles now. So just hold one foot out and circle the ankle around. And then the other way. When I was little, we would do this other foot. We would do this in church, not with our leg clear up here, but just a little bit. And my mom told us that then we would not get thick ankles. Thick ankles, terrible but I really think you get what you get. But it sure feels good to circle them around and then set your other foot down, sit up tall. Inhale and exhale and now come right up to the edge of the, bum, of the chair, your bum's just barely on it. And then if you need to, you can press down into your knees to stand up, but maybe you can stand up with no hands. Stand up really activate your feet so as if you're pressing your pinky toes away from each other so you can feel that strength all up your leg and then just really carefully tap your bum on the chair and come on back up let's do it three more times sink down tap your bum come on back up of course if this needs to happen with your hands on your knees that's okay and if this doesn't work for you at all, that's okay. You just do what you can do. Okay, and when you're up, oh, let's do one more. And when you're up, stand up. Press your feet away from each other. Ears over shoulders. It looks like we're just standing here, but it's work, right? Our legs are working. Our shoulders are back, our head is up, and we're all in alignment. Maybe your palms face forward, maybe they face your sides. Then come around to the side of your chair, if that's an option for you. If not, you're thinking of what we're doing in the, let me move this stuff. You're thinking of what we're doing in your chair. And we'll 
we'll just do tree pose. So tree could be with your foot, your toe on the ground, and your heel against your ankle. This could be tree. Tree could be with your foot against your calf, or it could even be with your foot way up on your thigh, just not on your knee. I like calf today and pretty much every day. So I'm thinking about the leg I'm standing on, lifting up through the arch of the foot, ears over shoulders, standing tall, holding chair, or maybe letting your hands come together. You just choose. It's not wrong or right. Maybe just hold for a little tiny breath. And then maybe your chair can, your tree can grow. Tree is vrikshasana in Sanskrit. Maybe your tree can grow. That might make you a little wobbly like it does me. That's okay. Use your muscles. Just see how that goes. Always hold on to the chair if you want to. Hands back to the heart, or at least one. Take a breath, set your foot down. Again, press into the feet as if you're pressing them away from each other and let your ears come over your shoulders. So if you're in a chair doing tree, I'll just show this before we do the other side. If you're in a chair doing tree, your arms come up like a tree and maybe they come out. You can make any shape of tree you want. Your tree could be a cactus. Okay, so if you're a stander, you can come over on the other side of your chair. First, we get settled in the foot that's going to stand up. So, we lift up through the arch. We press the pinky toe away from the rest of the body. We stand up tall. And then, remember, tree could be here with your toes down and your heel pressing into your, your ankle, right above your ankle. Or, could be... Um, what's this bone? Shen, calf, or it could be clear up on the thigh, just not on the knee. So once you're here, holding the chair absolutely fine, lift up tall in the standing leg. So this is a time when my ears are not really right over my shoulders. They are, maybe they, okay, they are, they are, sorry, but my gaze is just down on the ground. I'm looking at something that's not moving not looking at myself in the mirror or on the camera. That's called your drishti and that helps you keep focus. And then maybe grow your tree however you like. Maybe you make it a cactus. Doesn't have to be the same as it was on the other side. Then hands to the heart. Take another breath or two. And let that tree come down. Always so good to balance. Then, this can be done sitting or standing. I'm just gonna come here so you can see me better. Take one hand and press it down to your side. So, okay, we better say right and left here. Take your left hand, press it down to your side. Take your right foot, really press it into the ground. Then right arm comes up and we press our hands away from each other. So I don't know if you can see, but I'm doing my palm like, like a waiter and I'm flexing. So I'm bringing my hands back toward my arms. Hmm. Still breathing. Do the whole diaphragm. Come on back down. Now I'm gonna press down with my right hand with my left foot and my left arm's gonna come up my hand's still like this. And just lean a little bit to the side. But keep pressing down with your left foot. And then come on back up. Get somewhere where you can hold onto your chair. Or if you're sitting, you can do this on the floor. And then I'm just going to raise up on my toes and come back down. So raise up on my toes, come back down, show from the side. I don't get super high on my toes and you don't have to either. Just up on the toes and back down. If that's too much, you can one toe at a time 
without putting a lot of weight up there. Maybe that feels better to you. Just find your place up and down. Okay, now we'll pick up our toes, spread them out. Try to pick up your pinky toe as high as your big toe. It doesn't really happen on my feet, but I'm thinking about it, and that kind of makes it a little more intense. So they're still up, I'm just breathing, checking in with my head, or my ears over my shoulders. Standing tall. <laughs> Believe it or not, you don't have to do your fingers at the same time as your toes, though I usually like to. One more breath, and then just try to see if you can set down pinky toe, little other little toe, anyway, one toe at a time, and then set down your big toe, and then other big toe, all the other littles one at a time. Okay, so on my feet, it's basically like they're all going down, but I'm trying to think of it one at a time, and you can try that too. Let's pick them up again and we'll set them down the other way. So this little pinky toe, this little piggy, next, 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 big toe, then big toe, all the way around, yeah, nice. Okay, great, great on the feet. We're gonna do a little thing called yogi squat. So I'm gonna get sideways so I can hold the chair and turning my toes out heels in, toes out. Then, I'm just gonna sink, sink down. Maybe I just put my forearms on the chair. So, there's different ways of doing this. You can be more ballerina, so trying to keep your hips over your heels. You can let your bum go out. Just however it feels good to you to have a little squat. So you're feeling strong in the feet. You're lifting up through your arches, not rolling in, pressing your knees away from each other, feeling that work all up your legs. Let's breathe two more breaths here. Press your palms together. You can do it. And then come on up. Stand all the way up. Turn your toes forward again, and we'll do some of the tiger things that I love. So sometimes it doesn't feel good on your wrist to press them down onto a soft chair. So you can always make a fist and put your hands down. We'll keep, we'll keep our. Oh. We'll keep the left toe pointed to the chair and pick up the right leg. And it doesn't have to go up high in the air. And look out in front of your chair. Point your back toe down. And then you can bend the knee. Pump, the loop, pump your heel up toward the ceiling. Let your knee come out to the side. And set it down. Ooh. Come up. Take a breath. Hands down again. Fists or not, however you like. Pick up the left leg. Look out in front of your chair. Left toe pointing down. Your right knee can be a little soft. It does not have to be stiff. And try to keep your hips kind of level. You can check back and see. Then bend the knee, let the heel go up, just a couple of pumps, and then knee out to the side, still trying to keep the hips pretty level, and set it down. While we're here, let's just go down into dolphin. So bring your forearms down on the chair, hold your hands, step back, and look at your feet. They should be about hip width apart. You can stay right here. In fact, you can even rest your head on the chair if that feels good to you. 
Or you can slide forward, let your face go over your hands, and then back, and then forward, and then back. If you're sitting in a chair, you can put your elbows down on your knees maybe, or just bend um, maybe onto a table in front of you. Let's do one more. Hold it forward, looking down. Come on back. Let your head rest down. Hmm. And then look up, step closer to the chair, hands down flat. We'll cat and cow here and then we'll come up. So we just basically tick our, tip our tailbone up and look forward. So again, being so mindful of the neck, we're not going to just stare forward. We're not going to yank our gaze up. We're just going to look down at the floor a little bit in front of us, tailbone up, then curl the tailbone down, look down, and just do this again. Elbone up, elbow down. You can do this totally on your own breath. Usually we inhale as we tailbone up and exhale as we tailbone down. And then when you feel even, just stand up. Tuck out your ear and shoulder situation. Press into the outsides of your feet. You're completely active. And then come back to the chair, if you've left. Sitting on the edge, we're going to lift both arms up in the air. Reach over and take the right arm with your, take hold of the right wrist with your left hand. And then just gently pull yourself. Gently is the word. If you like, you can look up under your arm. Your legs are still active here. Your feet are pressing down into the ground. Maybe your knees are pressing together like a lady. If you're a man, your feet are just pressing into the ground any way you want to sit. And then come on back up. Swap out your hands. So right hand takes hold of left wrist and just gently pulls it over. Keep pressing into your feet. You don't want to fall over to the side look up under your arm and at the same time relax your shoulders down a little bit come on back up let your arms come down when you get here to your heart press your palms together feel your strong arms And then come on down, take one foot, cross it over the other, flex it. If it doesn't come all the way up, down here is fine, even on the ground is fine. We're just trying to open this up by pressing this knee away. So however that feels good to you. You can even press a little bit with your hand, that feels okay. If you're not feeling much, make sure that you're pulling your toes back towards your knee, flexing your foot. Sit up really tall. This is great if it feels good in your hip, just like uncomfortable but not painful. That's great. If you're still not feeling much, you could lean a little bit forward. Mm, feel it now. I love pigeon in a chair. It's just such a nice pose. I know I say that every week. Hmm. Giving our muscles time to lengthen and strengthen. And that's what stabilizes us. We want to work these good, strong hip muscles. And then press your hands if you're leaning. Come on back up. Maybe take hold of your foot, maybe not and maybe just pull your knee, pull your knee in a little bit. 
then set that foot down, just cross the other. Again, anywhere is fine. Just press the knee away. Flex the foot, bring the toes toward the knee. Sit up tall. Use your whole diaphragm. That's our breathing superpower secret. If you'd like a little more sensation, just come on, lean forward. Just be careful. Don't be falling off your chair. But flexed. Feeling that lovely uncomfortableness in the hip, this hip. Thinking about how strong and stable we are. Because right now we are, we're working on it right here. And then come on back up if you're leaning. Pick up your foot, maybe just pull your knee right in as you sit up tall. Let that foot come down. Let yourself come to the back of the chair. Hmm. Let your back touch the back of the chair. Wiggle any way you need to wiggle to get cozy. Your palms can be up. That means I am ready for whatever you have for me, universe. Or your palms can be down. That means I'm grounding in. I'm taking care of myself now. It's not right or wrong. It's just how you feel. Let's keep our deep breathing going just for a few more breaths. Feeling those beams of love coming around us from other people and shooting out of us toward other people. Thinking of people you love, whether, whether they're still on the earth or whether they're not. And then let go of your breath. You don't have to think about that anymore. This is Shavasana where our bodies are soaking up the things we did. Our minds are remembering the patterns and things that we did. Our spirits are remembering the feelings. And our, our breath is remembering how great it is to use the whole diaphragm. Those are all things we can take with us off the mat. But for now, thoughts will come. We'll just say, uh-huh, let them go. Don't try to fight them off. They're going to come anyway. Just say, uh-huh. Next. Shavasana.
you like, you can open your eyes, begin to wiggle fingers and toes. You could make some circles with your wrists and ankles if you want to. And then sitting up tall, just notice your breath again. Big, lovely, deep breaths. The chant today, Hari Om, is energizing. So hopefully that will help with the rest of your day. And if you're going to sleep now, it's fine. It's just fine. And as we take a couple more breaths together, the theme one more time from William Blake, we are put on earth for a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love. So, if you're interested, um, I'm interested in what you think about the beams of love. So you can always message me that. I would love to hear. Thank you for practicing with me. Let's take a few breaths to honor our bodies. Namaste.